sometimes you go to a pediatrician and the kid has a sore throat and, and, and he finds the glands are huge in the neck and little lumps around the body and he says, you know, I don't think it's a strep throat, it's probably this thing called mononucleosis. What is mononucleosis? Mononucleosis is um, typically an infection caused by EBV, which is Epstein-Barr virus. Um, and that accounts for most cases of uh, mononucleosis. What age is more prone to get mononucleosis in this country? Uh, children that um, are in school and uh, uh, young adults are the most likely to get it uh, in the United States. Usually it's diagnosed with a simple blood test and the most common infection that does it is called an Epstein-Barr virus, is that true? Correct. EBV um, is the most common virus that causes mononucleosis. There are uh, some other viruses and um, even uh, parasites that may yeah, give yeah. a picture that, uh, that looks like uh, mononucleosis caused by EBV. Now, if the kid had a full-blown case, how long do you expect the average kid to be sick with it? A day, a week, a month? It usually lasts for, some, for several weeks. Um, in adolescents and young adults, uh, tends to last longer. Uh, so, and often you see a period uh, during which the person feels tired for a prolonged period of time, for many more weeks. In fact, they could be over it and still be tired for many months afterwards? Yes, that's exactly what, what you may see in uh, older children and young adults. If the kid comes out with a simple blood test, they usually pick it up and the doctor follows it. But sometimes the liver enzymes could be a little bit elevated with it too. Is that true? It, the virus causes a systemic infection and infects many types of cells around the body. So um, one of the cells that it infects is liver cells. And because of that, there is inflammation in the cells. And you detect that uh, by a simple blood test. Uh, but it's not uh, the kind of infection in the liver that we typically would be concerned about as we do with hepatitis B or hepatitis C infection. It's like a little reaction. The body's just doing its job and it's going to get well. Correct. Okay. Is, is there any uh, reason you should use antibiotics with mononucleosis? No. Um, as many other types of... Uh, viral infections uh, that cause upper respiratory tract infection and, and cold, um, antibiotics are not indicated. And Sometimes in one of those you can get a, a rash if you take amoxicillin or ampicillin. So we try to be very careful not using those medications. Is that true? That's absolutely correct. Um, mononucleosis is an infection caused by a virus like other types of infections that cause sore throat and cold and antibiotics are not in are not indicated for these types of infections. But, but there is sometimes you can have mononucleosis and you can have a strep throat at the same time, and then you might have to treat the kid, but only because of the strep throat, is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Um, typically, that does, that's not the case. Uh, but So it ten, that tends to be the exception rather than the rule. So the basic rule is you try to not use antibiotics. And probably because it, it can affect a little bit, you try not to get too much medicine anywhere when you have to live a little bit in flame. Is that true? Generally speaking, yes. And if the kid had a fever, should you give anything to reduce the fever or avoid medicine for fever? You have to treat the symptoms. Um, so you have to make sure that um, the uh, child is comfortable. And one of the ways to achieve that, if the fever is um, a cause of discomfort, uh, you, should, you can use... Um, acetaminophen, which you can find in brands like Tylenol, and uh, ibuprofen, which you can find in brands like Advil. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, other important things also is, um, is to use something to soothe the throat um, be, uh, so the child is able to drink more comfortably because also the hydration uh, status of the child is, is important. If for some reason the throat got so swollen the kid could not even swallow or even had trouble breathing. How can that be handled? Because sometimes it gets that bad. That tends to be the exception. We um, agree. And um, in that case, uh, a short course of prednisone, uh, which is uh, steroid, steroid, 
um, is indicated, um, but it's not typically something that you would use in, in old kids. That's, That's an exception to the rule and only used in very limited cases, is that correct? That's absolutely correct. Because a kid has it doesn't mean you use it, only if you see obstruction to the upper airway would be the only real indication, right? If the swelling of the tonsils and the area surrounding it um, interferes with the swallowing or the breathing, then that's an indication for using the prednisone. And uh, if the kid had these glands and had mono, a doctor should always follow it to make sure there's nothing else behind the glands too, is that correct? Uh, that's absolutely correct. Um, Even though it's kind of rare to have anything else, but it's a good medicine to always follow the case carefully. Follow-up is always good, it's always important. Okay, if a kid had one of those, you hear about all these crazy Epstein viral syndromes, do they lead to that or is that kind of like real? EBV in certain children who have underlying um, immunological problems may lead to other types of uh, complications, uh, but again that's the exception. Um, typically in a healthy child, um, it's something that will uh, come and go in, a, in several weeks and uh, uh, there are no consequences typically afterwards. If you got mono, say, two years ago, can you get mono again? Uh, mononucle technically speaking, um, mononucleosis is a syndrome caused by a number of different viruses, but we're talking about EBV infection. Uh, as a cause of mononucleosis, and once you get it, you become immune, and typically, uh, you don't get it again. It can happen, but it's kind of like rare. Uh, unusual. Very unusual. Usually, something else behind the whole situation. I would look for something else. And, and if you were a athlete and you were going to play football or something, is there any concern because the liver gets big of playing a sport? Is there any danger if you're recovering from one? What would be the concept you should have about an athlete getting more nucleosis. That's actually an excellent example of why even if you get over the acute phase of mononucleosis, why you, uh, the child should, should be seen by uh, the pediatrician during, for follow-up. Um, sometimes uh, the spleen is enlarged to a significant degree during the course of mononucleosis and um, it takes some time after the episode or the illness is over um, and for the spleen to shrink back to the normal size. Um, when it's enlarged, um, the spleen, which is typically uh, protected under the ribs uh, on the left-hand side of the, uh, of the body, um, well, when it's enlarged, um, it now can be felt uh, in the abdomen and an injury uh, or a direct hit to the to that to the spleen uh, under the skin then uh, can lead to rupture and to internal bleeding. So follow up with a pediatrician um, after recovery from the acute symptoms of mononucleosis is important. So you expect a kid to be missing sports for a week, a month? How long would you normally expect? Well, obviously there's an exception to every rule, but normally how long do you think a kid would be not playing a sport? It's difficult to say how long it would be exactly. It may take several weeks. Again, it depends on the, how large the spleen um, became during the acute illness. If it's very large, it will take uh, several weeks. Um, and if it is uh, just a very tiny enlargement, just past the ribs, um, then it will go away quickly. So basically, it's a relatively benign disease but requires, in this case, a lot of good follow-up extensively because make sure that those glands are only related to mono. Sometimes other reasons can cause glands. Is that true? That's true. So, thank you very much.